I hadn't originally planned to do a video update about this process. I was originally just going to do a text update. New dinosaur, new survey, go do your thing. But the modeling of the Quetzalcoatlus dinosaur just got out of hand during the process. And I want to tell you a little bit about that. So here we are in Blender checking out the Quetzalcoatlus modeling that I did. And this was perfect. This was this was a perfect modeling job, okay? I, I basically threw a plane into the scene and I pushed and I pulled and I extruded and I moved bits around and I eventually created this entire geometry. Every single one of these points I created by hand. And I added a mirror modifier to it side to side and at the end I turned it 45 degrees so that it could go diagonal. So it could be just slightly larger than the pterodactyl that I already had. I didn't even have to boolean subtract out the bottom, which I have to do on a lot of dinosaurs, especially after pushing and pulling. A lot of it falls below the, the bottom and so I have to just cut it. I didn't have to because I modeled this one so perfectly that the bottom is already perfectly flat. The only modifier I added, added to this was the mirror modifier, so that the left and the right side matched each other, but that was it. And I took it and I printed out the model and it worked perfectly and I checked it at one quarter scale. I didn't mess up any of the details. It was perfect. Now the reason why I chose to lay this dinosaur down and put him on his belly was because I was looking at some of the pictures. This is how I model. I start by Google searching images for the dinosaur that I'm talking about and I look at various images and I, I in particular I kind of looked at this one which was a model from a video game and this one and I said yeah I'm not I'm not going to be able to do what I did for the pterodactyl to make its head and arm uh, wings lay flat on the build plate and then build up from there that's just not lining up for this one and I I played with different ideas of putting it on its side but that wasn't working and, and things like that the angles weren't working for it and in the end I just decided I have to lose the detail on the bottom you lose detail when you go low poly you lose detail when you make things for 3d printing I just have to make them flat to the bed and lose the detail on the bottom. And I lamented that, but in the end, I think it was the right choice. However, this dinosaur is often depicted standing up. In fact, it's compared to the giraffe in a lot of ways. They, they for some reason, like to point out that it was as tall as a giraffe, and it even had that slant on its back and stuff like that. And so it's very frequently depicted in images and when they put the fossils together standing up like this. And I thought, I mean, I could. And this is where things got out of hand. Because first thing I did, let's, let's turn off the armature here. Yes, I created an armature for it, but that wasn't even the first thing. The first thing I did was I took the model and I made it three-dimensional. So I, oh, you can't see it because it's got a modifier on it cutting off the floor. Let's turn that off for one second. There we go. I made a three-dimensional. I made the bottom, I made the model that I would have made if 3D printing weren't the constraint. If I were just like, eh, I can, I can make this shape, any shape that I want hovering in the air. This is more or less what I would have done. A little bit of dimension on the bottom, a little bit of dimension on the top, flat wings in between. Might have even opened the beak. Why not? Because I've got freedom to do that. Then I created an armature, a skeleton for it. And I could take this skeleton and pose it however I wanted. Uh, of course, when you use a skeleton, you have to turn off the mirror modifier because the skeleton will only apply to one half of it and the whole thing will be perfectly mirrored at all times. Actually, it gets even weirder than that. If you move a skeleton arm down, the other half goes up. So it's not exactly mirrored. It's, it's messed up. So the model that I had to make had to be complete so I had to apply that mirror modifier to it not a problem just you know a little quirk in case you ever decide to do something like this created the skeleton just created it by hand created added an armature and then kept extruding bones from it until it was the shape that I wanted and parented it 
to my mesh with automatic weights. I did go in and edit the weights just a little bit because I wanted this bone on the hand to have complete control of the claw and I didn't want anything else to have control of the claw. So I edited the weights slightly, but most of the weights, almost all of the weights, I left exactly where they were. I had to do a little bit of cleanup on the head, but you discover that during posing. Oh yes, then I posed it. And I posed this thing standing up just like in the pictures with its back feet on the floor and I put its tail on the floor as well so that that'll touch the base and it'll build up to the rest of the body. There might be a little bit of nasty bridging but I don't think it'll be a problem. I haven't tested this one out as of the time of recording but there will be a test of this. And then I played with the posing and let me tell you getting these wings to do right I had to double hinge the wings in order to get them to lie properly to pop up the way that they were supposed to because I was just doing such a nasty fold right here I was taking what was a flat model and essentially folding it 180 degrees on itself it was not happy working with me making that double hinge so that it would be well less but not much less than 180 degrees and then what I actually did was I took that part and I put it below the build platform and brought it up trusting that the geometry of the wing popping up from there would be cut off and sure enough if I grab this model and turn the modifier for the booleaning of the floor back on it worked mostly there's a little bit of nastiness that's happening and I could not fix it even with the weights right here in the claw it's just pinching and pulling stuff a little bit too much so I had to go through and post edit that after I exported the model but there we go this the modeling of of the original one took an hour flat and it was perfect I could have just been like yeah I'm good but taking this thing putting a skeletal rig on it, messing with that rig. I had to edit this geometry several times to make it so that the skeletal rig would deform it nicely. I had to add a dish, oh, hours and hours and hours of my pioneer day yesterday, which is a state holiday in Utah, so I had it off. Hours of my day were spent rigging this so that we could have a Quetzalcoatlus standing with its mouth open. Was it worth it? I don't know. I mean, this is pretty cool. But this also means that there's now two models for this one dinosaur, which happens quite a lot in this Kickstarter. Speaking of variations on models, the Sloth YMCA, there was a lot of people saying, oh, we need to get that model in, in the Kickstarter. There you go. This will be included in the Kickstarter. It was not designed to print without supports, and so I had to turn on supports, and there's a lot of cleanup that I have yet to do on this YMCA sloth. But I also thought, hey, while I'm posing them and making collections, let's get three wise sloths going on here. Sorry, my lighting on this guy is terrible, but we got the hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil sloths. So there we go. That is another bonus thrown into the Kickstarter. I'm going to continue working on dinosaurs. Hey, I know I've got a lot of dinosaur content here on the YouTube channel uh, because this is quite frankly what I'm doing quite a lot of lately, but I have some other content that I want to get up on there about mini spools and about small prints, so expect those to come soon. Stay tuned. I want to thank you guys very much for staying tuned and watching. Thank you very much for supporting, and if you're watching this on the Kickstarter, be sure to hit that link for the survey because we still have more dinosaurs to decide what we're going to do, and this time I also want to learn a little bit more about the 3D printer that you have, so be sure to hit up that survey link, and thank you very much for your support. As always, safety first. I'll see you next time. Speaking of cleanup.